Happy Wednesday, world. That's good. This is Christian here. I am Sadie's husband. If for some reason you don't know that, um, and if you also don't know, we have two kids now, and we have just been enjoying our time here where we're living, and um, yeah, just laying low, just enjoying time as a family, and. Um, being with Honey and being with Haven, and I've been asked to kind of come here and intro and give you all a little life update before we play this awesome episode of a compilation of best relationship advice that we've had uh, over the course of a few seasons, and it's going to be awesome, so stay tuned for that, but a little quick life update. Uh, like I said before, if you do not know, we have two kids now, and their names are Honey and Haven, our two daughters, and they are the greatest thing ever, Honey is literally in heaven with her sister. She wants to hold her all the time, which we can't really let her do that because she uh, she still thinks she's kind of a, of a baby doll. So as good parents, we do not allow that to happen. But um, one of the funniest things was, so when we brought Haven home to the hospital, home from the hospital, we put them both in matching pajamas like the first night. And Honey had a meltdown. Like she was screaming. She was saying, take her back to the doctor. Like she had, she wanted nothing to do with her. But then about two hours later, we um, just kind of convinced her that this was a good thing. And she uh, started kissing her cheek, kissing her forehead. And then a few days later, Honey's been obsessed with Frozen lately. We watch it all the time. But our new movie now is Shark Tales. But with Frozen, it's Anna and Elsa. And ever since Sadie kind of made the connection of, you know, you're like Elsa and she's like Anna or whatever. Like, y'all two are sisters. It's been the biggest game changer um, in her little life. And it has been the greatest thing ever. Sadie's doing good. She's recovering well. And um, we are still running on limited sleep. But uh, so far, Haven has been a uh, far better baby than Honey was. I don't, know if it, I, don't, I don't know if I can say it, but I think I can because Honey had colic. She spit up all the time. And Haven is just like a little angel. She uh, barely cries and she um, it's just the cutest thing ever. But yeah, seeing Honey just become so obsessed with her has been the sweetest thing. You know, we... Um, Got home from the hospital and we had a meal training set up where all of our friends and family for what felt like forever just were, were bringing us food. And it was the sweetest thing of getting to see them come by and meet Haven and kind of just spend time with um, us as a new family of four. And it's been the sweetest adjustment. As I said, um, Honey was more difficult than Haven's been. So it's been a different adjustment. And I feel like we're more uh, qualified, maybe not qualified, but we're more equipped now as a uh, as a parent of Honey for two years now and being with Haven, um, I just feel like we're more experienced and we're kind of just more natural in that and more comfortable in that. So it's been the sweetest time and having all of our friends come by and uh, just bring us food and spend time with us has been just one of the sweetest things. And like I said, it's, it's been we've been laying low, but we've also had things to do. A few weeks ago, we had um, a screening of the, of the blind premiere that we all went to the theater uh, to go watch it. We've had a um, 4th of July party where we got out a little bit and, and hung out with the family. We've had things that were that we've been doing but we've also been laying low and uh just kind of taking time off of work and social media and just a uh, lot of little bear a lot of shark tales a lot of frozen um a lot of just fun tv shows that we've been getting to watch and maybe not as much sleep as we would like but that is expected having a newborn baby and we also just want to thank y'all so much on social media just for sending so much love and encouragement um just after the birth of haven and uh it's it's sweet to see all of y'all saying that she looks just like honey. We kind of think she looks a little different, but it's been sweet to see y'all um, just encourage and uplift and just send lots of love and prayers for that. So thank y'all so much. And we hope you enjoy this episode where we put together some of our best pieces of advice from episodes in the past. Hope you enjoy it. Well, you sleep slightly offended me 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Yeah, but let's just, let's just, okay, this is actually a good moment, because you know how sometimes you're like arguing in a marriage, and then you'll be like, if I could only just like rewind this, and we could actually play it, and you could see it, you would know that I didn't yep. say that. Yeah. Yep. Like if there's a hidden camera. Yes, yeah. and y'all were kind of acting as our hidden camera, because y'all were both there, and <laughs> we're going to rewind it, and I'm going to let you repeat to everybody what I said that just so offended you. Well, usually I would say I do want a hidden camera, but for this moment, I wouldn't, because it's not that big of a deal. So basically... <laughs> I'm about to go on a hunting trip in Nebraska. When this goes out, it'll be Monday, so I'll be in the thick of it at this point. Um, and it's supposed to be like negative one degrees. And like everyone that I've told I'm going has always followed up with, oh, well, do you have enough clothes for that? I Am didn't I, know this. Hold on. I, I wasn't in any of these conversations. Hold so. on. They don't know that. And That's my, what I'm telling you. And them. my response is always like, <laughs> yes, I have plenty of clothes. My ski jacket that I wear on our ski trips is camo. Perfect. So I'm going to wear that, obviously. 
I have plenty of, of yeah, it's really cool camo. Yeah, yeah. So I have plenty of <laughs> plenty of like Under Armour cold gear, like leggings and like you know tops. I have really uh, warm sweatpants that I'm gonna wear. I have wool socks. <laughs> this I have, time you're saying it's really, really warm, warm sweatpants. sweatpants. <laughs> well, I was gonna wear some like flimsy like Lululemon <laughs> kind of sweatpants. Like that's yeah. I'm, am I gonna wear Lulu? Yes, but it's not. It's not. It's not like the latex like okay. the stretchy okay. ones. It's like the wool warmer okay. ones. They still don't know what, what I said to offend you though. So Sadie <laughs> said. So after I've heard this all week. And we're talking about it's gonna be like negative one on Friday, so this is minus this Which two, three is days. Our ago. first time to talk about this. Yes. I haven't been in and any Sadie's of those eating her little acai bowl and she's like mouthful, like, <laughs> Do you have enough clothes for that? No. I yes. Said, do you have clothes for that? Yeah, and that with like the eyebrow scrunch. It was like, like do you have clothes for as that? As a concerned as wife. If, like as if I has as, as if I haven't like prepped and like thought about it. But like in my mind, I'm like, I'm being a good wife, like, hey, like, do you have enough clothes for that? Like because if you don't, I'll go make sure you get the clothes for that. And he's like, whoa. Well, here's the thing. I just been. Do I, I have clothes? Who I've, do you think I am? I've been doubted all week. And just to see my best friend and my lover <laughs> look at me. <laughs> look at me good. in question. <laughs> if, I ha if I'm prepared, I was kind of like a little caught off guard. God, I'm, I'm expecting no, you to be then, like, then of I course say, my baby's prepared. Do you prepared. have enough clothes for that? And then he goes, I said, do you even have clothes for that? Like, because I know your closet. Yeah. You are a Lulu guy. Like, yeah. we could start a store. And there's but not, like, a lot, a lot of, like, winter gear. Mm -hmm. And and then you follow that by me asking about you saying, yeah, I have a ski jacket. And then I'm like, <laughs> well, that's great. But, like, do a you very, have socks? Do you have pants? Do you have? And jacket. then you said, and I have sweatpants. And I'm like, babe, I think you're <laughs> underestimating what negative one degrees feels no, like. You need, like. I'm gonna be Thermal so bundled socks, up. Socks, like all of it. I am. I'm gonna be very prepared. I just <laughs> make sure to get footage. Of yes, it, yes. We'll, thank we'll make you. Sure to document it. The proper, the proper thing would have been like, I'm sure you're prepared, but baby, are you? <laughs> you know. <laughs> so it's how you work. Yeah. It's always, yeah. always here's rough. the thing in marriage, and this always <laughs> happens. Like when you have an argument and you think someone says something the wrong way, it's so mm -hmm. easy to be like, what you should have said mm -hmm. was, <laughs> yep. except for like, who thinks to always <laughs> say like. Babe, I'm sure you're so prepared. You've probably already packed for this whole trip, but I'm just making sure you might be cold. If like you, I'm eating if a, you started and I wasn't that, eating a eyeball, I was eating a burrito. Do you think I would have been defensive? Way harder to talk when you have a burrito in your mouth to get all those words. Do you in. think I would have been defensive if you were to live like that? I don't know because I you, have. you you were on the defense. I would no, I was Sometimes not. Sometimes when you get on the defense, I was you're not. on the defense. I'm always on offense. I'm a scoring that guy. That is not true. <laughs> that is not true. There was a question out here that talks about what does healthy communication look like in marriage? And I think we could probably both look at our arguments this morning and pick out some advice to people on what it looks like to communicate more in a more healthy way. Like you said, I could have started by assuming the best out of you and saying, however, I will say I, I wasn't even assuming the worst out of you. I really was just wondering if you felt like you had enough. But if I would have known the backstory that people had already questioned you and you felt doubted, I definitely could have used more of language like, hey, I assume the best of you. I know that you probably have prepared for this, but I want to make sure you're not cold. That would have been a much more sensitive way to say it. I do think one good marriage advice for communication is do not start on the defense. Do you all have any advice from y'all's uh, communication flop sometimes on things that y'all feel like you've noticed in your marriage? You're like, okay, I could have said this better. Or whenever I say things like this, it does not go well. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's different for the person. Like for me, it's like I need to assume that Parker's going to respond with my best interest at heart rather than like assume the worst in me kind of like what yeah. you're just talking about like this morning in our <laughs> conflict conversation I didn't say it because I was like well you're about to go on a trip I don't want to stress you out like works a lot like we can't resolve this and he's like you know I would rather talk about it in like five minutes rather than like wait 10 days to talk about it and it's like I have to remember that Sometimes it's not just about me when I need to resolve something. Like it's about our marriage and like what's also going to be best for Parker rather than assuming I know what's best.
Yo, I am not going to lie. A late night snack is kind of my thing. I know it's not good, but look, sometimes you just got to get a snack before bed. Am I right? One of my favorite snacks is dried mango. I am obsessed. And the ones that I got from nuts.com are literally the best I've ever had. I was not expecting these to replace my go-to brand, but they were so good. They have become my go-to. They, I really just like have to keep them on repeat because they're so good. And now I want to try everything from nuts.com. They have so many delicious options to choose from. If you're not not familiar, nuts.com is your one-stop shop for freshly roasted nuts, dried fruit, sweets, pantry staples like flowers, and more. Their wide selection means that there is something for everyone. And if you like sweets, they've got you. If you like savory or salty, they got that too. They even have a ton of options for gluten-free, organic, and diet-friendly options, so there's truly something for everyone. But Nuts.com has more than just snacks. They even have jellies, herbs, and flavorings. And I'm sure you're going to find something that you love. And if you want to make sure that you never run out of your favorites, they've also got you with their hassle-free auto deliveries, which is perfect for my dried mangoes. I don't have to run out. Um, like I said, they have incredible dried fruit, but they also have different chocolates. I'm a big chocolate and nut person, so that's always fun. And then also so many different go-tos. So you're just going to have to go on their website, browse, have a heck of a time with it because they have a lot of good stuff. Uh, something else I love that nuts.com is all about quality, which is really important. They roast their nuts and pop their corn the same day as it ships. And those are some seriously fresh snacks, y'all. You taste the difference. Nuts.com has been doing it the old-fashioned way since 1929, so they definitely know what they're doing. And I know you'll be able to taste the difference when you get it in the mail. Nuts.com also sells directly to businesses. So if you got a small business and need supplies, they've got you covered. And right now, Nuts.com is offering new customers a free gift with purchase and free shipping on orders of $29 or more at nuts.com slash woe. So go check out all the delicious options at nuts.com slash woe. You'll receive a free gift and free shipping when you spend $29 or more. That's nuts.com slash woe. I want to talk about going back to you and dad. So y'all got back together and then it was very short turnaround. So y'all got oh, back yes. together in like September. So two weeks after school started. Yeah. And then y'all got married in January. January. <laughs> so, yeah. so by your second semester, you were married. We're married yeah. Because didn't y'all get married? And then you didn't go to honeymoon. Not two days later, you yes. went to college. Yeah. And he we got married you. on a Saturday, January 11th. We drove to Arkansas on Sunday, and wow. he started college. It was his first time in college. It was my second semester on Monday. Wow. Yeah, we did not. We did a, wow. that summer. We went to Hawaii with my parents as a honeymoon. <laughs> like, that was like we, what we yeah. called our honeymoon <laughs> because we didn't have honeymoon. But we were, like, so young and in love. We didn't care. We were, like, we're moving into our little bitty apartment that was literally, like, the size of this podcast space. It was so oh, tiny. Wow. But we were just so excited and so in love. That's that crazy. It didn't matter. So, Okay, three months go by, you get married, you still didn't really have a plan plan, you still were mm -hmm. um, broke, broke, and yes. like, when, when we say you were broke, I mean, y'all did not have money, you went to Hawaii yeah, with right. your parents because they were going to Hawaii. That's right, like, oh yeah, you there was had, no opportunity. No, y'all even <laughs> went to college because yeah. your parents helped you go to college, yeah. I mean, it oh, was yeah. not like y'all yeah. had money, right. and when it came to y'all's marriage, y'all really did not have money, mm -hmm. so give us just a picture into um, what that looked like, because some of y'all's arguments at the time, I remember just y'all not not having any money were pretty yeah. funny. And oh just what, what did y'all eat? What were some of the meals that you were cooking? Oh my gosh. Okay. So our budget was so tight. Like I was full-time in school. We actually, we, and he, and he was trying to go to school and work and support us too. And uh, we actually worked at one of those call centers for a little while where you call and like ask for money, you know, like, oh, I don't even know if that happens awesome. anymore, but like, you'd be like, Hey, you know, try to ask for money for something. It was terrible. It was the worst job ever. <laughs> but anyway, so we were so broke. We had a very tough, we never ate out. Like Little Caesars Pizza where it was like, you got, you know, a lot of pizza for very little. That was it, you know. <laughs> um, we had a very, we, we made like hot dogs. They would be like Monday would be like, lunch would be like hot dogs <laughs> with hormel <laughs> chili. Tuesday would be like fried frozen chicken, you know. That's we awesome. were on the tightest budget. And, um. Yeah, we had, we literally, I remember in the grocery store, we had like $5 left of our allotted, you know, all our money was like in envelopes to say like, this is your grocery money for this week. We had like $5 left and he wanted to buy a pack of baseball cards and I wanted to buy a magazine. And it was like a full out fight because it was like, <laughs> who gets to who spend gets this extra money that we wow. have here? But, um, okay, this will tell you uh, uh, ex exactly how, how tight. So, 
I'll never forget this. We um, we had some friends that loaned us their washer and dryer because they, I don't know, I think they rented another apartment mm -hmm. that had a washer and dryer in there and we didn't have one. So they loaned us their washer and dryer. And um, so we wanted to like do something nice for them for letting us use their washer yeah. and dryer. So we took them out to Shoney's, which I'm saying all these references that you're <laughs> no, <laughs> no one, one. not going to even know. No one but anyway, if anyone that's older, they'll remember Shoney's. So we took them to Shoney's and I'll never forget the bill comes back. And it was $40 for us four to eat at Shoney's. And I was like, oh, my goodness. Like, how? This is like, Which is just $10 a person. This is $10 a person. But because we had, like, gone all out. We had, like, ordered dessert. We were, like, we're splurging. We want to, like, we want to, like, be generous oh and thank gosh. you. And then whenever <laughs> You're like, oh, we signed no. that check and it was $40, I was like, oh. How are we going to like oh eat the gosh. rest of this week or month? You know, <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> I like... love that though, because like nowadays with social media, like there's this pressure as like a young wife and, um, and mom to mm -hmm. have like all the snacks be like literally cut into dinosaur shapes and like the strawberries <laughs> yes. to be all in hearts and every meal to be perfect and it to be healthy and it to mm -hmm. be beautiful and then for young wives like i'm not knocking on this because i actually um take the inspiration but my brother-in-law and sister-in-law just got married and they literally post their weekly menu they print out a beautiful uh -huh. menu and that it's fancy food and they'll post their beautiful dinner and their, you know, little mocktail uh -huh. that they made and their appetizer and, uh -huh. and they'll grade the cheese. I mean, it's like, it's like yeah. fancy and it's yeah. awesome. And there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. Uh -huh. And like I said, I have used some of their recipes yeah. and I could do better at that. But sometimes seeing how perfect other people's meals can yeah. be and plates can be, it can make you feel like, Oh man, like mm. what's my hot dog? You know, yeah. like what's my little Caesar's pizza? Right. But sometimes, like you're just in the That's position right. in life where ramen mm. noodles are just gonna have to do. Yeah. You know. Uh huh. I mean, for this season of my life, yes, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich is a great dinner. You That's know, right. yeah. cereal is just fine. That's right. And so mm -hmm. I just think that like sometimes because we see everybody else's mm -hmm. life, ours all of a sudden doesn't look like enough. Yeah. Um, but man, like seasons come and seasons mm -hmm. go, and some look different yeah. than others, and and there. Mm -hmm. Have looking back times. on that period, I mean, that's so, it's such fun memories, it like is. thinking about that, how we were just like, you know, trying to make all the pieces fit together to make our budget and everything. Yeah. And we didn't have that. And I do think that is a harder, you know, yeah. on, on this generation because you are seeing other people's yes. lives and in a way that is very edited and that yes. looks like, oh, they have it all together. I've probably said this on a podcast before, and it's funny now that we have Parker on the podcast because I always say that me and you probably wouldn't have started dating without Parker. That's true. <laughs> because there That's is like, true. okay, but, but gave me a take lot of us guidance. back to that. Like, whenever you were about to start pursuing me, like, what are the conversations you have with Parker? Because I do think that this is a good, like, this is actually a good example to people because a lot of times, like, people pursue someone and, like, it's like, a private thing or it's actually not much of a pursuit it's just they start yeah. a relationship and then they like don't include any of their friends or friends aren't involved yeah. in a relationship it gets isolating and it gets weird and it gets bad but like you had your friends as a part of our relationship before we were even in a relationship mm -hmm. and so what did that look like well i think for me and obviously you know it i'm like a super indecisive person <laughs> yes <laughs> like i like having people around me to speak into things that i might overthink yeah or like doubt so for Parker, a lot of it was just like uh, through prayer of like, you know, I hope this work. Please pray that this actually works out. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of it was that kind of prayer. Uh, but even just like conversation, like, I don't really even remember like the ma the majority of our conversation. You might remember some of the most of them, maybe. I don't know. Um, I remember y'all had like a long talk walking on the beach. I heard, yeah, I remember, I remember that, that talk. I heard about that too. Yeah. <laughs> it just, but it was just like us talking through like, hey, what would this look like? You know, would I be capable of leading this? Like, how would this kind of like work out? And just kind of like needed some encouragement to like, hey, if I'm going to pursue this, like, you know, it's it could change a lot of things in my life. So just talking through yeah. those things and like seeking wisdom and like having just encouragement from like a friend that I really mm -hmm. love and respect. And that is huge. Like what yeah. you just said is so foreign to so many people listening, like that you would even stop and consider before pursuing, because it would be easy to just pursue because you're like, I like this girl. We, you know, 
we have a lot of chemistry. We talk on the phone all the time. Like, it's so fun. And I think whenever you get, like, your fun and, like, feelings involved, like, things go super fast. Mm -hmm. But you were, like, slowly, like, okay, is this actually wise? Is it actually smart? Can I actually do this? Like, what will this look like for me? And, like, talking out with one of your best friends. And then you really did do everything so intentionally. Like, it, the start of us sure. dating was so intentional which actually built our foundation for dating to be so intentional and so great. And then mm -hmm. that built our foundation for engagement to be so great and then marriage to be so great. And so like, I, I think that was just the start of a good relationship. And, and I know y'all did those things too. Y'all's friend group was just so mature and like the guys that y'all surrounded yourself with and how y'all helped each one of each other start the relationships that they were in. And yeah. I thought that was really cool. But I would say to people listening as a practical piece of advice before you ever meet the person is listen to like dating, uh, you know, marriage, engagement, all those kind of podcasts. Listen, read the books about relationships because I listened to Mike Todd's uh, relationship series mm -hmm. and then Ben Stewart, Single Day Engage Mary. We read that book together. Uh, we read all kinds of books. Um, but even before I met you, I mean, I listened to Mike Todd's and I remember like the first one was like before the person and it just really got my heart right. And like, okay, before the person, like who am I as a person, sure. you know, um, what am I going to bring into a relationship? And so I think it's already good to start like prepping your heart to start preparing for your relationship way before you ever even get into the relationship. Mm -hmm. I think that also shows God that like, God, like I'm, like I'm surrendered to your plan for my life, but I'm also preparing for what you have for me. Right. And um, I think that's a great thing. Mm -hmm. So what does it look like for y'all to be in community with other people in marriage? Yeah, I mean, I think at least for us, we try to like obviously prioritize each other having individual friendships too, you know, because it's just important for Christian and I to have <clears throat> a good relationship and with other guys to be honest and things like mm -hmm. that. People hold us accountable because then I'm going to be a better husband and I'm going to be able to be there for Freddie better in community and things like that. I'm healthy as a husband, but yeah. I mean, it just, it definitely, you have to prioritize it. You have to in, be intentional with it because when you start to isolate yourselves, then you start to think you're the only ones going through what you're going yeah. through, you know, which I think we did in our first year of marriage. We were in a community group, but it wasn't, you know, we weren't being intentional. We weren't really speaking up about what we were going through, mm -hmm. but if you're in a community, they'll start to realize like, hey, something's not right. Yeah, like yeah. we all need yeah. to come to us. And so you have to have people that are there for you mm -hmm. that will call you out and hold you accountable when you're not willing to be honest about what's going on. Yeah. Cause we all have that when so you're struggling, right. you know, you're like, you don't want to be honest about that. That's yeah. hard. Yeah. Especially so the people right. you care about and look up to that are your friends. So yeah. you have to have people there that can help you do that when you don't want to be. Yeah. Hey, Ofe, I'm Sadie Rob here, and I don't know what your morning routine looks like. For me, it's either honey or my alarm clock waking me up in the morning. It's kind of a toss-up on which one will get to me first. Uh, I don't know where your phone fits into your morning routine, but if you're like me, it's often at the top of the list. And let's be honest, that is uh, not a low-stress way to start the day. Instead of starting or ending your day with social media notifications or the news, starting it with a meditation-based scripture app would be the best way to start. And let me tell you, Abide is the number one Christian meditation app and its users report lower levels of stress, anxiety, depression, and even better sleep. But it's not just for starting your day. You can also end your day with Abide Bedtime Stories. They're based on um, the Bible and they're meant for kids and adults. And I've actually had um, moments in my life where I felt anxious at night and I've turned to the Abide app, listened to this, and before I know it, I'm asleep. I mean, it puts me in the most peaceful sleep. I don't even remember falling asleep because I'm so sucked into the beautiful sounds and what it's saying and the Bible-based meaning. And so Abide has actually helped me personally as well. With Abide meditation starting at just two minutes long, they're so easy to fit into your schedule. Plus topics like overcoming anxiety, managing stress, and finding forgiveness have helped me so much in my life. Just those types of messages. And it's great that you can just listen to these on your phone and it can calm you through the day. I love finding simple ways to center myself around Jesus and doing this with so many millions of others that are using the Abide app is actually really cool. I'm so excited to tell you guys that for a limited time, our listeners will get 25% off a premium subscription when you text WOE to 22433. So get started now with 25% off a premium subscription by just texting WOE to 22433. You'll get additional stories and meditations, premium music, soothing sounds, and more. Support the show and get 25% off by texting WOE to 22433. 
Okay, so you and Dad, y'all are such a cute couple. Uh, y'all are so <laughs> funny. And for those of you who do the Enneagram, you'll appreciate this. Mom is a seven wing eight, and Dad is an eight wing seven. So firecracker, a little fiery, a little sometimes. firecracker. <laughs> uh, yeah, they they have definitely. Y'all aren't uh, gonna lie that you've argued a few times in your life. A few times, yeah. uh, just <laughs> once or twice a day. No, but y'all are so close, and y'all's arguments are actually like your love language. Like y'all push each other, and you are. Are such a great team. You also have fun together. Y'all play a lot of tennis, a lot of Scrabble, go fishing, yes. cook. You, I mean, you're more of an assistant chef, uh, not really like. Yeah. I cook. would say cook, you eat. <laughs> you, That's true. He is yeah. true. You <laughs> well, he doesn't it. even let me assist. No, he really. wouldn't. <laughs> but y'all do a lot together, and it's really sweet. Y'all are certainly a team. Um, how do you stay on the same team with your spouse? whenever you might disagree on something. Because I feel like me and Christian stepping into parenting, there might be Mm -hmm. things that we see things different, but how do we like stay on the same team? I think that is so important because kids can sense weakness. Like they can sense like where's the, where's the weak link or who's like going to give on this, you know, and they know it and they can, it's it's uncanny how they can figure that out. So it is important. So that's like whenever you say like, Oh, I'll just go ask dad because he'll yeah, say yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it is important to say united front. And you're not going to agree on everything at all. But I think it is about respect ultimately. It's like, like I respect you as a parent. You respect me. And I think – and I really believe this like so strongly that God gives – us two parents because you need that kind of give and take. You need those differences. Dad was a little maybe harder on some things than I would have been, and I was a little harder on some things yeah. than he would have been, but we respected one another to enough to say, like, you love our children just like I love our children, and, like, you're doing what you believe is best for them just like I am. And so sometimes you do kind of have to, like, say, okay, I'm going to let you take the lead on this, or you're going to let me take the lead on this. And it is a give and take, but it's about mutual respect. Yeah, that's And good. knowing that, like, you know, they don't want harm for your yeah. child either. They're doing the best, and perhaps, you know, God has something that they're learning, that the, your child is learning through that that like he brings to the table that you might not know or realize. Yeah, that's good. So mutual respect. I think that mutual respect is, is the key to it. And knowing that you are actually on the same team. You, you are. actually are going mm-hmm. for the same thing and love the kids the same. Yes. And it's funny because I can remember going to you and like, you were always the first option, and I'd be like, "Can I do this?" And if you said, "If you said go ask your dad," I'd be like, "Oh no!" Like that. That was like that was like I just assume it's a no. Like I'm not. I don't even need to take that next step. Except for when it comes to money, I feel like dad was more yeah, free with dad the was twenty dollar bills or yeah. whatever. Yeah, that was more free, and he would even tell us like, "Hey, there's a twenty in that drawer if you ever need to order pizza." Like, yeah, <laughs> he was more free. I was more like, "Nope, your allowance. You already spent it." Yeah. So. Oh, <laughs> brutal. All right. Do you sleep talk? <laughs> do we sleep talk? Do you I do. Sleep? No, I, I, don't. I, I don't sleep talk. I sleep talk? You like sleep mumble. Yeah, really? Yeah, I mean, not like co- like cohers- cohesive, cohesive, <laughs> whatever that word is. You don't like, they're not like. Do you regret trying to say that? I word? do regret trying to say that. <laughs> um, they don't make cognitive sense. They're like. Oh, 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 oh. Do I really? I, sometimes you do. This yeah. is this a is not shot. just me fabricating for the this podcast. Just in, I sleep talk. Wow. You know, you sleep like murmur, Mum. murmur, murmur, mumble. Oh it's like a gosh. mumble. That is crazy. You don't sleep talk, but you snore. I do sleep sure. snore. You do. <laughs> I kind of like a wake snore too. I have a deviated septum, so I have a loud breathing. Half of our videos that I film, you can like hear me over the back, the uh, whatever sound being if like. If you're ever watching our vlog and you just hear. That is Christian, and I do apologize to all of your ears on the podcast no, for no, hearing no, that. No, I don't. Right? See, I don't regret that. Um, but I don't sleep talk. I sleep snore. But this is actually a really good question, and like I said, take it a little bit of a deeper turn. But it said, "How do you mend trust that has been broken in dating phases, or do you just let it go in marriage? How do you maintain trust?" And I'm sure we both have stories of trust being broken and mending it, and all the things. But y'all want to go first? Yeah, I was trying to think of um, in our dating relationship when trust was maybe rocky. Um, And I thought of that one time Mm -hmm. where I had a friend from like just we went on a mission trip together and he was a little bit older, truly was only a friend. Um, But when Parker and I started getting really serious, I had like he had called me and I told him over the phone like, yeah, we're really serious. We're talking about um, engagement coming up and 
in my eyes, it was like, this is just a friend. You know, this is nothing, has never been more than a friend, has been like almost like an older brother to me. And when Parker found out, he was really hurt, obviously. But it took me a little while of, of just him explaining to me like why that was so hurtful. And also I had to receive like, okay, I was in the wrong for that. Mm -hmm. um, and to rebuild trust in that moment, it looked like cutting off communication with that person. Mm -hmm. Not to be like mean or, you know, Parker wasn't being rude to say like, hey, this would help our relationship. This is what this looks like moving forward. But it was like, this is respectful to me. This is respectful to our relationship. And if we are going to get married, like you don't need to have friends yeah. of the opposite sex. That is more than our relationship. Like yeah. the four of us are friends and and that's great, mm -hmm. but never would it go past that of like the four of us. Yeah. You know, and so that you needed. You call Christian just to catch up. Exactly. Yeah, there's a boundary. Yeah. There's yeah. such a boundary. That would be weird. <laughs> that would be yeah. so strange. And yeah. even like, I think all of us are really good at, if I was to have to text Parker, I would text the both of you. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, it's just respecting yeah. people's yeah. relationship. Yeah. Sure. yeah. And I know for you, like, that was really hurtful for you. I remember that whole day, like, mm -hmm. I actually had to go babysit that night. And I was so nervous because also in my mind, I was like, man, is he going to break up with me because of this? Like, how much did this hurt him? Um, and it made me really nervous. Mm -hmm. And I think it would have been really easy in those nerves to kind of shut down and defend myself. Mm -hmm. But I wanted our relationship to work so bad that I was willing to say, okay, I was in the wrong and I'm really sorry and I'm willing to do yeah. whatever needs to mend this trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I feel like for both of us, we both had things that happened to us in our past that made trust difficult, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like in that situation, like I have past relationships where a similar thing happened, you know, much worse, yeah. right? Where I had been cheated on and, and trust was broken. So it made that even more sensitive. Mm -hmm. So I think to your question, it makes it even more important to not just ignore it, but to make sure yeah. you're working on that. And then when you're dating, especially as an individual, like hey, I need to heal from that. Why do I have trust issues? Yeah. Because when you get to marriage, if you're still, I mean, you, obviously you're still gonna need to deal with trust and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But the earlier on you can start working through those things, I think yeah. that really, it's it really true. helps. What you don't deal with in your dating relationships <clears throat> will go into your marriage. And yeah. I think so many people think, well, yeah. when we're married, I'll just trust him because I have the ring on my finger because exactly. he's wearing the ring because exactly. people know we're married, but it doesn't work like that. Yeah. If, yeah. Or when I have a baby, it'll be... Yeah, you yeah. always think like in the next stage, <laughs> it'll like solidify us more to right. yeah. to the world and I won't be as jealous or I won't have trust issues. But th those things come from such a deep place inside yeah. that putting a ring on your finger doesn't change everything, you know? Yeah. It's really about the relationship that you build and the trust that you build and... We had, you know, our Rocky, our Rocky one, which we've shared the story so many times, so I won't share the whole story. Yes. But I will share what came from that is like. Who's in the wrong? Me. Well, not necessarily. I was in the wrong too for being so uptight about it. Who initiated it? But you were in the wrong Thank for you. not telling me Thank where you were at Thank and you. then um, lying about Okay. the picture yeah, <laughs> so yes Let's just continue on hey that. i was i was trying to be nice though and say i was in the wrong too and and, and in some ways i was because i went crazy about it but i'll tell you also i went crazy about it because i was the same way as y'all like i had things in my past that had happened mm -hmm. where you know the person who wouldn't tell me where they were and then i would literally see pictures of them on instagram taking pictures with girls at a bar because they recognized him yeah. as my boyfriend you know and 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 you know, more well-known people that had dated that they thought they could lie where they were at, but they are recognizable. So people post, people talk we about it. We find my friends back then. Yeah. Hey, yo, friends, Sadie Rob here. And y'all, I, you know, as you know, Christian and I, we love to stay active. We like to be healthy, as healthy as we can be. And now we have kids. Like, we want them to be healthy, too. We want them to stay active. And so making and sticking to healthy habits can be challenging for all of us, but it's also important that we incorporate them in our life. And sometimes it can feel overwhelming, but AG1 by Athletic Greens makes it so easy. And that's why the Huff fam is big fan of AG1. Christian loves his AG1. It helps him on the daily to 
support his immune system and increase his energy and focus. Every morning, he can just put one scoop of AG1 in his water, which gives him 75 vitamins and minerals. And not only does it boost energy and focus, but it also does amazing things for your gut health, which we've seen that as we've helped our gut, it's actually helped our mental health. And that's like science, y'all. So I'm telling you, get your gut healthy, your minds can be healthy. Christian loves that AG1 goes down so smooth and it fits so easily in his overall health goals. And I mean, AG1 was actually designed with ease in mind so that you can live a healthier and better lifestyle without having to do a lot. With no pills or complicated routine, AG1 is the healthiest thing you can do in under a minute. Even when traveling, AG1 has got you covered by single-serve travel packs that are easy to toss in your bag and just hit the road. Whether you're flying, traveling in the car, put them in your backpack and go. Christian has gotten so many friends hooked on this just because of how much we talk about it, which we're proud of because it's good for you. Another thing I personally love is the vitamin D3 plus K2 drops. They're so simple, y'all. You can just put a couple drops in your food or your water and your drink every day. It's so easy. Um, every bottle also has 600 servings, so this stuff really last. No pills, no frills, just an easy way to give your body the vitamins that it needs to support your heart, your bones, your teeth, and even your skin. Uh, if you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving a free one-year supply of vitamin D, that's huge y'all, and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Just go to athleticgreens.com slash woe. That's athleticgreens.com slash woe to check it out today. But we didn't have to find my friends, but <laughs> find my friends was uh, your tagged photos on Instagram at the time. And so I would find out these things and it would be so hurtful because <coughs> they would lie. They'd be like, oh, I'm studying. And then they would actually be there. And so whenever I saw that picture, it like, was like, oh my gosh, like, is he doing this to me? Is like, can I trust him? And then it was really hard for me to gain trust back. And I was like so uptight. And remember the time that um yes, this, I remember that. this is so embarrassing but i'll tell you, you like bonefish? yeah so yeah. this is like how like crazy you can go if you don't work out like your trust stuff this was two months after we got engaged yes so i honestly kind of had the thought of like she's got a ring on her finger you know yeah she like she anymore. knows like but at this point we were way past we were, we were past way that past stuff. that yeah. stuff and whatnot, but still, like, it, I guess it just hit a nerve. So most of the time, Christian would always, like, tell me where he was, what he's up to, and he just, like, forgot to tell me that, which is not a big deal. He didn't have to tell me this. Sadie did not text me back, like, two hours before, and I was with my family. So we ended up going to dinner, and I did not tell her we were going to dinner because I was like, she didn't text him back. Like she'll, t like when she texted him. Totally reasonable. Like There's nothing wrong with what he yeah. did. When nothing that you did when was she, wrong. When you text me back, I'll say, hey, by the way, I'm going to dinner. Mm -hmm. But I didn't feel like, because I knew you were busy with your family. So I didn't feel yeah. like being like, hey, by the way, I'm going to dinner with my parents. Because like, mm -hmm. I'm with my parents. And we actually didn't have a relationship where we had to tell each other everything. It wasn't no. even like that. So he did nothing wrong in this scenario. I'm just really pointing out the ugly that it that comes out of you whenever you don't fix your trust problems. Mm -hmm. So I look at Find My Friends and I see Christians at like Bonefish Grill. Which I'm Grill. confused why you checked my friends before you texted me. I back. thought I did text you. But that's a, that's Anyways, I think I did text you. I think I think you've forgotten that part. That was like four years ago. I can scroll back. And <laughs> four years <laughs> back. Oh, it'll God. take you a year. <laughs> anyways. Yeah, anyways. But it wasn't even Bonefish Grill. Like it was like the comments or wherever you were. But we were like, at Bonefish. Yes, yeah, so I didn't know that. It was kind of like this like outdoor mm -hmm. shopping mall. And I was just like freaked out immediately. I was like, what are you telling me? And like, I just assumed that you were with like friends from high school or like, like I don't know why. Like, my mind just like went there. No, I have one okay, but I'm telling you, this is just what my mind went. And I was just like, he didn't want to tell me because like he is back with like his old friends or like, mm -hmm. and, like your cousins are awesome. But Y'all can do like crazy stuff together. And I was just like, what are they doing? And why didn't he tell me? <laughs> y'all can't. Y'all just like, y'all just funny, like funny stuff. But you know, you never know. So I was just like, what are they doing? And I just like freak out. And and I was like way ridiculous. I like called you ridiculous amount of times. Like, I think his parents were like worried that you were marrying me yeah. because at the, at that moment, not really, but they were like, "This is a problem. Like, y'all yeah. need to y'all need to fix this." And I was just like, "Man, honestly, like, I just really have a trust problem. Like, this has happened in my past. I'm so scared of this happening again. You would think that like having a ring on my finger would help me, but it actually makes me more nervous because now I'm about to step into a lifetime with you. Like, is there something I'm missing? Like, I was like seeking like the thing that was gonna be like 
that's it. Yeah. Like that's the problem where right. this is the thing. When there was nothing wrong, like, you had given me every reason to trust you. You had been honest with me. You had been open with me. Uh, there's no reason for that. And that really kind of woke me up to like, I need to get help. Because mm -hmm. for the longest time, like with trust, you can blame it on the other person. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times it really is you. Yeah. And it really is your past stuff. And so mm -hmm. we worked through a lot of that. And our premarital counseling was awesome. And we like really went there and worked through past relationships. Mm -hmm. and family stuff and whatnot and it set us up for success and honestly I'm a I don't think I mean I think throughout our marriage I've been super trusting I haven't been like a jealous wife a distrusting wife I mm -hmm. have really trusted you the whole time and it's not because we got married it's because yeah. we worked on those things yeah, and so to be two months engaged and be that bad and then, then to step into marriage and be this healthy mm -hmm. I think that shows that you really can change yeah, yeah. but I will say to even like with both of our stories um, you know, like with you having some of those issues and like with the, when you having some of those issues, it also took like this from what we just shared, like me and Freddie, like we had to be consistent after that point. If like two weeks later, Freddie did, did the same thing, then it would have yeah. been like, oh, well, clearly you did not receive the message when I was like, hey, this actually really hurts my feelings. The same thing with you. If it's like, mm -hmm. if I didn't tell you again where I was at, then you saw it again or whatever, then it's like, well, clearly he didn't take me that seriously. So there comes a point where after this yeah, breach of trust, yeah. like there has to be a consistent pattern of like mm -hmm. acknowledging what the other person needs to mend what mm -hmm. was, you know, like I guess you could say fractured in a moment. Because mm -hmm. um, then like, like you said, with defensive, like, I have a problem with being defensive. So I could have gotten, well, I kind of did get defensive in that moment, but I could have stayed defensive to where it's like, you know, I don't really acknowledge that, yes, I was in the wrong when I did this and just keep having like those walls up to where I kind of don't take, maybe don't take what you said as seriously as, as, as it was kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I think just having consistent patterns after you, you know, kind of breach that trust and to mend it back because- mm -hmm. That's good. You can always have a that outlook of like, well, you should just trust me. But it's yeah. like, if I'm not displaying patterns of trustworthy behavior, then you're not going to just trust me because I'm telling you to trust me. Yes. Right. And yeah. I've been around relationships where words like, you should just trust me or I'm sorry, like lose its power because I'm yeah. like, well, I can't trust you because you've given me no reason to. Or you yeah. say you're sorry, but I know you're going to do it again tomorrow. Like, yeah. Yeah. you know, so words matter. They carry weight and you have to see the action behind them. And I love yeah. that you said that about it does go both ways with trust. Like for the person that broke trust, you have to be intentional about mending the trust. For the person that's trust was broken, you have to be intentional about forgiving. And yeah. mm -hmm. I, I love that verse. It's like very convicting where it says, love keeps no record of wrong. You know, there comes a point where it's like, I can't keep bringing this up. Like right. a broken record. We call honey a broken record right now because if she says a sentence, she'll say it 10 more times. It's like the first time <laughs> she's ever said bracelet. She's like, bracelet, 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 bracelet. And I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> but like, that's how we are in relationships yeah. sometimes. They're like, yeah. you did this. You didn't tell me where you were. You didn't tell me where I was. It's like, I get it. You, I didn't tell you where I was, you know? But like, mm -hmm. stop bringing it up again. Like, when are you going to forgive, you know? And so I think it does that's go good. both ways. Yeah. It's good. And it's not controlling either. I think yeah. like when the person that has the trust that's been broken on their end to like ask for okay, can you text me? Okay, can you not cut off conver conversation with that person? It's not like out of a controlling heart. It's out of like, this is my need. Like what you're saying, Krishna, that's so good. Yeah, I love that. Because that's the thing. Like if, if I was literally, you have to always tell me where you're at, that gets controlling. Yeah. But if I'm like, hey, if you're going to something that you know I would want to know about, you know, mm -hmm. if there's going to be girls there that are our age or whatever, like, um, even which like, even the, which now we're not, yeah. but in college yeah. it was like, totally. you know, not even parties, but just like hangouts. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I just want to know like bonfires, just let me know, yeah. you know, and you always let me know about those things. And mm -hmm. so it shouldn't have bothered me when you're there at dinner with your family, but that just shows you how deep something can be. Someone asked a great question. We both do this in our homes. And someone said, how to host a Bible study for your friend group in your home. Freddie is the hostess with the mostess. Here's she throws a good party. So love tell us what hosting looks like for y'all. I love hosting. I've always loved hosting. It involves sweets. It always involves sweets. <laughs> That's really how you should. get people into your home. Right. Um, food and community is a good combo. But I really... This sounds funny, but it's so practical for me. Like when I ask people to come over or we're hosting, it's like 
I want them to feel at home. And that doesn't mean like everything needs to be perfectly clean. It just needs to be comfortable. That's like nice. I just want people to feel mm -hmm. comfortable. And if they have a lot going on, they can open up. Or if they just want to like goof around, we can just goof around. You know, it's like there's no set way to host people. Yeah. But it's just creating an environment and a space where whatever needs to happen can happen. And yeah. it's like allowing the Lord to kind of have that. But I also love like taking care of people in that way. Like I love having cookies when people come over. Chocolate <laughs> chip cookies. Yeah. Parker loves that. Yeah. And you make some good cookies. <laughs> Christian's always like, uh, do you think Freddie will make cookies when she comes <laughs> over? I'm like, you can ask Probably. her. And that's like, Very people likely. always are like, you don't have to if you don't want to. Parker's dad is always like, you don't have to, but if you want to. And the thing is, is I genuinely love it because <laughs> yeah. I just love, like, <laughs> I love doing that for people. It's like yeah. a way for me to bless people and mm -hmm. like a love language for me to love others is like, provide them with cookies as yeah. funny as it sounds well, it always but. makes people happy everybody yeah, wants a cookie exactly yeah i love that that is practical and it, that, i think that's the thing with hosting like don't overcomplicate it yeah like be practical about it make cookies it might be over you don't have to have a perfectly clean house at a comfortable home yeah. it's like mm -hmm. what people just people just want to come hang yeah people sure. just want to hang yeah and parker you're good at getting the grill going yeah i like to i like to grill everybody everybody likes a good steak or some uh -huh. chicken and things like that and our pastor from all over miles, he always talks about like communities, like common memory with other people, mm -hmm. you know? So I just like, let's just come over and like, a memory doesn't have to be some crazy trip we go on, you know, it can just be, hey, we came and hung out together. And because we did that, somebody ended up opening up and we prayed for them or whatever that is. And so kind of like what you were saying, it, it takes time to get that. Like if you move somewhere and you're there for six months, you're probably not going to have many memories with people. Yeah. Because it's mm -hmm. just a short amount of time. But yeah. If you actually commit, I mean, to me, practically, if you, you have to give it at least a year of doing that to really give it yeah, a good shot. It's yeah. true. And I will say, too, even like with doing a Bible study, I think there's a beautiful thing about like having something planned, but then also just kind of like letting the night happen. Yeah. Like we have a Bible study every Wednesday, and I would say 75% of the time we do a Bible study, and the 25% is like, we end up having deep, deep conversations about something <laughs> we're else, just goofy. or we just end up playing a game in the house and just doing life with one another. So I think sometimes we can kind of be rigid with it, like, oh, this is Bible study tonight, and it's going to be all about Bible study. And it can be less about community and more about like the Bible, which is an awesome thing. But sometimes it can feel like, like you said, forced or kind of like you're rigid. rigid with it. Instead of like just doing life with one another, then it's like, oh yeah, we're doing Bible study. Yeah. Uh, like sometimes we won't start a Bible study till like 10 o'clock or 9.30. And it's like, this is a little late because everyone got here at 6.37, whatever. But it's just the fun part of doing life. And I think sometimes like... Fellowship. Yes, it's fellowship. Yes, you host a Bible study and if you do Bible study, awesome. But also it's not like the night, you know, you chalk it up as a loss if you don't study the Bible. Mm -hmm. If you end up just having deep conversations. Yeah, it is a good thing about hosting too. Like don't put too much expectation on what it has to happen when mm -hmm. your friends are over. Yeah. Just like let it happen. And I think with our Bible study, ours is really simple because we don't try to put too much pressure on anybody. And so yeah. we watch a sermon. It's like that simple on YouTube. We pull it up and then we talk about it and then we pray together. And it's like really powerful. But then some nights we are just like more goofy and I love what you shared about. It's like a co common memories. And I think it's some of our like memories and like we have a group text and it's literally called Mary J. Blige. And every time I just like see it pop up, it makes me laugh so hard because of one night we were yeah. watching TikToks of like when they were doing that thing. It was like so-and-so died and the moms would freak out and all these people were like, Mary J. Blige died. <laughs> and they're like, not Mary. And we thought it was like so funny. We're like, so some of those movies are just like the best where you just start yeah. laughing together. And I will say like for friendships, one thing that I found like really helpful is don't compare like your new friendships to your old mm -hmm. friendships because you have to remember your old friendships, you had time with them. Yeah. And so I think sometimes it's like, you know, I'm coming from these five-year friendships, four-year friendships from college. Mm -hmm. Then you move and you know someone for a month and you're like, why are we hitting it yeah. up? It's like, because you just met them. Yeah. <laughs> like, because you people, just started really. hanging yeah. out with them, you know? And, um, you know, when I think back to how those other friendships started, I'm like, oh, that's sort of the same way, you mm -hmm. know? And we've all gotten so comfortable with each other. We've kind of like hit that mark. But I do feel like it does take time. And it's so important you don't compare what you're coming yes. from to where you're at. Because that's not, that's not fair to anyone to put mm -hmm. that expectation on them. And I'm so guilty of that. 
I do have to admit, I am that person that I just, obviously I'm a counselor. Like that's just part of my nature. Parker always says like, I'm more deep than the average person just because like, that's what I love. So it is hard for me because I'm like, well, we didn't have the deepest conversation the second time we hung out. And so (laughs) we must not have a friendship, but I really do just have to like slow slow down and say to myself, like I've had conversations with friends from college and she, one of my friends, Maggie, she made a really good point. She was like, your friends in college were not only your friends. They were your sisters. They were your moms. They were every part of your community. Yes. And you lived with them. Like yeah. they went through heartbreak with you. They went through yeah. transitioning to a new place and a new town and it, like all these new things. And so you can't expect that to look the same in marriage because you have that with your person. Mm-hmm. And it's not to say that friendships are not important. Friendships are so important. But just your need of them does change, and that's okay. And I think that's hard post-grad to realize that, but even more so when you add, like, Mm -hmm. all of your friends getting married after college, that also brings a new challenge, too. That is so true because different season friendships are going to look different ways. You know, when you get married, that's so true. It's like your friendships are going to look the same as when you lived with all your girlfriends. Mm -hmm. That's so different when you live with your guys. And it's, like, the same when you have a baby. It's like then that adds a whole new element to it. And so, yes, friendships are important, but as far as like the priority of time you spend with your friends, Mm -hmm. well, your husband begins to take that place and your Mm -hmm. kids begin to that place. And then, you know, you add that because it's beautiful and you need that and you love that, um, but it is just different than it used to be, you know, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And I think that was more so the struggle in the first year is I was like, why do I not have these friends like I just came from? But it's because I live with those friends and like you're my friend, you know? And so you just have to like, you not put the pressure on yourself to like maintain all these relationships, you know?